on behalf of Professor S. Ganesh, Director, IT Kanpur, and the entire institute community, I, Shweta Kumar, your host for this evening, would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you present here today at the Golden Jubilee reunion of the class of 1973. This is a very momentous occasion as I'm pleased to inform you that we recently celebrated 64 glorious years of Institute's foundation. I would now like to request Professor Kantesh Balani, Dean of Resources and Alumni, to kindly come forward and be seated on the dais. Requesting Mr. R. K. Agarwal to kindly take his seat on the stage. Mr. Agarwal. Arkan. Requesting Mr. Gopal Sutwala to kindly join us on the dais. I now humbly request Mr. Manoj Pant to kindly take his seat on the stage. <laughs> humbly requesting Mr. Rajiv Swaroop to please join us on the dial. I would now like to request Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, to come, please come forward and be seated on the dial. I now humbly request all our guests present on stage to please come forward for the ceremonial lighting of the lamp, which symbolizes knowledge and wisdom. Om Shubham Karoti Kalyanam Arogyam Sampada. Shatru Buddhi Vinashaya Deepa Jyotir Namostute At the commencement of any auspicious occasion, Jyot has been observed. The lighting of lamp symbolizes abundance, prosperity, and knowledge, dispelling darkness and ignorance. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, reunion is not about counting the number of years. Rather, it's about relieving and cherishing memories and time to be grateful for the beautiful journey you had as a student of IIT Kanpur. Despite the years that has passed, I'm sure all of you remained young at heart. So why don't we begin today by relieving our old days and becoming young, rowdy students once again? Let's make this 50th, remember, 50th reunion memorable. Shall we? Yes. So I would request everyone to clap with me three times and shout 50 as loud as you can. We can do better, and this time, just imagine yourself 55 years before, with full of energy and lots of josh. So three times, come on. Thank you. Let me take you through a short trip down the memory lane. 55 years ago, 220 young boys and two girls from across India decided to embark on a challenging journey away from the comforts of their home all the way to a city called Kanpur, now named Kanpur, to be a part of this prestigious institute called IIT Kanpur. Chai kuch das paise ki thi? Wills Navy cut saat paise ki? Golden Eagle teen rupay ki? Or Narangi, two rupees ki. Haircut eight hours me ho jata tha. It was an era of Rajesh Khanna, Shammi Kapoor, Sharmila Tagore, Hema Malini, Aradhna, Amar Prem, 
जॉनी मेरा नाम कारवा आनंद हरे रामा हरे कृष्णा वह ब्लॉक पस्टर है चुंगवा फुटू व टू को प्लेसेस इन द सिटी शर्त हारी या जीती चुंगिंग साढ़े तीन रुपए में हो जाती थी चुंगिंग बोले तो चुंगफा डिनर सॉरी ओके थैंक यू सर शशि कैंटीन का हक्का चाव एंड रेड रोज व फेमस इन द कैंपस वे नॉट ओनली कॉफी बट स्पेशल कॉफी वॉज सर्व स्पेशल कॉफी रिमेंबर दैट सर्व इन टी पॉट फेमस जागन्स ऑफ द अड्डा पॉइंट व फत्रु फुड्डा स्यूट फंडा गोल चाप दिया मैथ्स कर दिया तेल हो गया तलाश रहती थी शिशुपाल जी की एज ही वुड डू ऑट जॉब्स और इंतजार रहता था शिव चरण जी का शिव चरण जी बोले तो मेल मैसेंजर हु वुड ब्रिंग एडमिशन लेटर्स स्कॉलरशिप लेटर्स अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर्स इंक्लूडिंग शादी के प्रपोजल लेटर्स विद बॉयज और गर्ल्स फोटोग्राफ इन साइड दैट आई डोंट थिंक एनी बडी वुड हैव मिस्ड विजिटिंग शीबा रीगल हीर पैलेस सुंदर टॉकीज फॉर एंटरटेनमेंट एंड टू टॉप इट ऑल कन्नु नौटंकी एट कल्याणपुर वॉज अ बिग हेट Movies in L7 on Saturday and Sunday night was a major attraction. और उसके बाद तालाश शुरू होती थी माइक सिंह की माइक सिंह बोले तो सरदार जी हु यूज टू अरेंज माइक्स फॉर यू ऑल एंड द मोस्ट कॉमन फ्रेज ड्यूरिंग मूवी टाइम वॉज ऑडियो रिपीट एंड फोकस Getting stuck at Ravatpur was for lack of transportation was a real pain. Thanks to Bara Number ki city bus, who would run in every few hours. Otherwise, Gyara Number, Zindabad. The rapid fire round, generally asked by seniors to make freshers familiar with the institute, was full form of IAS. Anybody? It was generally used for girls. invisible after sunlight and about the doctors will sitting in the dispensary whom would you visit if you are sick doctor sikka and whom would you visit if you are bored doctor vorbanka the brawl between hall 2 and hall 3 had always been famous for various reasons battle of supremacy would range right from competing for cultural festivals to sports to mass shouting from rooftops during blackouts to gali competition <laughs> it only reminds me of a famous quote by atal bihari bajpai ji kaurav kon kon pandav tedha sawal hai dono or phaila shakuni ka koot jaal hai Does anyone remember Nakvi tempo driver? Wo Nakvi ka tempo tha who would ferry more than 20 people in his tempo for fun ride at night. Aur ye 73 ka tempo hai who have touched through aur ye 73 ka tempo hai who through scholarships have touched many lives and gifted cheerful smile. Ladies and gentlemen this is an honored batch to have former prime minister Mr Morarji Desai Indira Gandhi visit the campus during this day and other dignitaries included Mr Ravi Shankar Y B Chawan and well known spiritual guru Mahesh Yogi ji a studious batch to still remember the electrifying lectures of Dr C N R Rao Dr P K Ghosh Dr R N Biswas Dr T M Srinivasan Dr Anand Krishnan and Dr L S Srinath who would great who would draw great diagrams and the famous anecdote by one of the professor while teaching ESC 342 was just like we have divedis trivedis and chaturvedis in electronics we have diodes triodes and tetrodes 
A dynamic batch who showcased their managerial skills by managing the mess strike in Hall 3, where faculty spouses and students collectively cooked food and managed a mess. I feel privileged and honored to, to tell you that this batch has the maximum number of distinguished service awardees. And last but not least, a blessed batch. Because 220 girls ka kabil nikla as one girl chose her life partner here. I can't personally share all your recollections of IIT Kanpur, but we talked with few of your classmates to try to get a closer look of the class of 1973, whose members have such nicknames. I request those who are present here to kindly acknowledge by raising their hand. OT. <laughs> OT meant over Tandarus. <laughs> Mota. Mama, Buddha, Buddha, Sint, Katie, Shorty. This is all I have from the treasure of memories of class of 1973. I hope I got my facts right. So for next reunion, I'll make sure. <laughs> I'll add Chotu and Lambu. <laughs> On this beautiful day, let's all remember to laugh, share fond memories, and make new memories that we can talk about at our next reunion. We are so pleased here. We are so pleased that we gathered here today in person, something we cannot take for granted anymore. Now, without taking any more of your precious time, I would like to invite Professor S. Ganesh, Director IT Kanpur, to kindly address the gathering. So, warm welcome to IIT Kanpur, and uh, you know, the 50th reunion is something that uh, not only all of you celebrate, but as an institute, we really celebrate. And as we learned, this particular batch has the maximum you know, Distinguished Service Awardees. And uh, I, you know, have the privilege of working with many of you. I mean, you have, you know, the last five, six years. And it's a, it's a great uh, feeling that, uh, you know, in spite of being away from the campus for 50 years, most of you really, you know, value your stay here and uh, contribute in very many different ways to the Institute's growth. And uh, on behalf of the Institute, I would like to thank you all for that. And thank you very much for being with us. Uh, the weather is not good, and the delay and fog, in spite of all these challenges, all of you could join. And I'm sure our hosts here take care of good care of all of you. And you would have a wonderful time today, tomorrow. Uh, we look forward to your interaction and feedback and how we can grow together. Thank you. So what I would do uh, in the next uh, 30 minutes or so is to give an overview about the Institute as to where it is today and what uh, are the plans that we have in terms of uh, the growth and the vision for the Institute for the next one decade or so in 50 years and so on and how you could contribute um, uh, in, in whichever way, way you feel uh, that we would be extremely happy to have you on board in our journey. Uh, you know, there are certain things that, that uh, IIT Kanpur we are always <clears throat> very, very proud of. Is one is, of course, the computing, computer science as the first you know, institute to launch. And, and of course, the computing as one major area in any department that you look at it. And that tradition has continued, and even today we have a fantastic, you know, supercomputer facility that was established, you know, sort of uh, set up for three years back. It's one of the uh, uh, high-performing computing facilities that we have in the country. So that's a tradition that continues. The other one, of course, is a is the campus, 
how green it is. I'm sure you would have, uh, over the years, you would have seen that, uh, you know, the buildings come up, but the campus is only becoming greener. You have more trees, and that is something that we are extremely proud of, and we would like to continue planting more trees. Therefore, the campus remains green, and a good campus to, to visit, to live, study, whatever it is. But these are some of the statistics. Of course, uh, the area remains the same, but faculty strength has grown. So we have close to 80 faculty members now. Uh, the UG PG students ratio is almost similar now. This is 4,300 students in PG. And uh, we have 9,300 hot students currently and 170 postdocs. And we are extremely proud of the alumni base that we have, which is more than 40, 43,000. I mean, that's the, you know, that's what gives the visibility to the institute. That's the brand that, that all of you really contributed to IIT Kanpur and the name that has come from the alumni who have done exceedingly well after graduating from the institute. And we are extremely proud of all of you, uh, especially this particular batch. These are the academic uh, departments. You can see that uh, the departments that are given in red color font are the ones that have been added in, in the last three, four years. You have a sustainable energy engineering and department of design in the engineering departments. And in science, we have cognitive science, place, planetary, astronomical sciences, and engineering, what you call a space. And of course, in humanities, we have economic science for a while now. And then we have uh, interdisciplinary program. And uh, this IIT also <clears throat> introduced the biological sciences and bioengineering department about 23 years back. And one of those faculty who joined the department. Uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, being here as part of the department, uh, you know, how it has grown. That's also one department that is, you know, we are extremely proud of. Um, there are many new programs in terms of academics. This is one uh, program that we started about uh, two years back, which is called as the E-Masters program. This is mainly meant for working professionals. It's a completely online program. As you can see here, we have close to 14 programs that have been offered right now. It's uh, well received. Even the first batch has graduated. So we have close to 800 students who are enrolled in this program. And uh, this is something that we thought we could make a difference in terms of uh, upskilling people who are already working. Uh, that's, uh, you know, in this also, we are extremely happy to share that uh, some of us, uh, our alumni, are contributing in terms of uh, you know, different modules because it's more industry relevant courses. So we really uh, reach out to alumni who could, you know, contribute uh, their expertise in terms of you know, some of the courses, and that is something that we would also would like some of you to consider in the future. <clears throat> the academic program, as you all know, the, you know, IIT Kanpur has the most flexible program, whether it is undergraduate or master's, and in the undergraduate programs, we have minors, double majors, dual degree. Uh, we have done away with, you know, students joining the uh, dual major, uh, dual degree, that is the uh, UGPG together. Everyone joins for the four-year program, but they can, uh, you know, stay, can, you know, stay for one more year and uh, earn a master's degree in their own department or any other department. That that decision they have to take in the second year or so. That is something that uh, unique to IIT Kanpur. The kind of flexibility that we offer, other IITs do, uh, IITs don't offer. And likewise, the dual degree. One can stay for one more year and earn an undergraduate degree in other discipline. You know, that's also something that, that we are very, very happy about. And of course, we have introduced few other programs like SCHEME, that is for social science, communication, humanities, economics, is a new uh, stream. If people are not interested in the core engineering, they can go for this kind of uh, option as well. And I have, we have uh, introduced exit degree options for students. Uh, who are not that good in academics. Uh, they can get uh, a, a BSc degree. Uh, with certain credits, of course, uh, they have to complete, and then they'll get a BSc degree. And of course, there are credit transfers for MOOCs if they do. Uh, this is something that we have been working on. In terms of faculty, you can see that uh, in the recent years, we have added significant number of faculty. We have 579. In fact, if you really look at uh, all those who are retired and who have entered into the program, we have close to uh, 200 plus uh, faculty members 
who have been hired in the last three, four years. Uh, that's a significant number, right? Uh, uh, that's, uh, it's also because of the new program that we have started, new departments, therefore, you know, we have new discipline and we have recruited uh, faculty members. And of course, the faculty have done exceedingly well some of the awards that are listed here. I would, uh, 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 you know, touch upon this particular, you know, uh, Infosys Prize, which is again, many of you would know, it's one of the uh, prestigious fellowship that is uh, you know, the prize that has been uh, given by the Infosys Foundation to recognize the outstanding contributions of faculty, not only from India, from anywhere. And this year, two of our faculty members have been chosen for the award, uh, one in engineering, physical science, and other one in biological sciences, bioengineering, Dr. Arun Shukla and uh, Dr. Sachiran Tripathi. That's something which we, we, we are very, very proud. <clears throat> uh, likewise, the fellowship uh, with the World Academy of Sciences, uh, Professor Avinash Agarwal uh, for last year. Uh, that is the new addition to this fellowship. And we have you know, a large number of recognition that have come to our faculty. That also shows how the research and development has picked up and uh, you know, if you really look at some of these prizes, if you see probably this IIT next only to IIC in terms of the recognition, especially in Shanti Sharup, Bhatnagar awards that, that you would see. So that's uh, about the recognitions. But if you look at the uh, research and innovation ecosystem, that is what something that in the last two decades that really changed, uh, transformed the institute from an, an institute that is known for undergraduate education to uh, an institute that is also now as a recognition for being uh, one of the leading institutes in research and innovation. That is because of uh, the ecosystem that we have developed over the years. Uh, of course, we have the academic departments, but what we also have developed is the interdisciplinary academic program wherein faculty from diverse departments come together and offer uh, you know, uh, contemporary you know, academic programs. And then we have multiple thematic research centers, some of which I'll touch upon, which, which has a very focused mission mode projects. Most often these are funded by external funding agencies. And then we have uh, set up central research facilities that you know, has a high-end facility for research. And we have two other addition to this ecosystem. One is the techno park, which I'll talk about also, which is a research park, is a huge uh, you know, facility wherein industry can come and and set up their R&D labs here in collaboration with uh, you know, the faculty and students. And of course, we have one of the best incubators in the country, uh, which you call as first, uh, which also I would touch upon a little later. We have close to uh, 160 companies that are currently incubated in the incubator here. Yeah. Uh, uh, because of this ecosystem, uh, we, we have been ranked you know, number one in in the innovation category among all the institute and overall position, if you look at in the NIR of ranking, we are number four in the engineering and number five in the overall university. <clears throat> so these are some of these, um, you know, recent, uh, you know, the technology development or transfer to the, uh, uh, the companies or that are in use, which includes, for example, the National Air Quality Index through which we measure the pollution that has, is, is developed here and monitored from IIT Kanpur. And we have this national blockchain for e-governance. That's also uh, 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 something that came out of the research at IIT Kanpur. We have recently uh, trans tech transferred this particular uh, the watch that you can see, touch sensitive watch for blind and visually impaired. This is it's gone into a company for production. And so on. So this is again, we have transfer to company. This is again for uh, pollution detection and so on. So this is some example. Uh, a few more examples that are shown here. Again, this is a watch, different types for the blind and some other applications, including uh, the, uh, you know, it's a kind of a uh, diagnostic devices that has come in. So these are some of these. And what is uh, really something that I would like to highlight upon is the the number of patents and IPR that you have filed, of which what percent is really commercialized. If you really look at 14%, even at the global level, it is very, very good because the average in global sense is about 6 to 7%. In that way, it's something that uh, we feel that our uh, 
you know, uh, technology that, that are developed here that has more industry relevant, therefore it is getting transferred, but we hope to, uh, you know, increase this further. <clears throat> This is just a summary about the incubation system uh, that we have, the startup uh, uh, incubation. Uh, we have close to 167 uh, startups currently in our portfolio, and as many have already graduated. Uh, and uh, this is a cumulative turnover of our portfolio, and this is the funding that has been raised, and that's about 4,000 jobs created. And what is very, uh, you know, uh, we are proud about is about 75 of the 167 are women-led, uh, you know, companies. And then there are 50 plus patterns that have come from the startup itself through their uh, R&D. In fact, uh, we have a large number of labs that are dedicated for these startups and they can use them. And the entire institute is open for the startup they can use. Uh, that is one way we are able to really uh, cultivate a good R&D ecosystem even for the startups and our faculties and students participate in this program. And I'll show you some of these, uh, you know, uh, startups that have been recognized for their uh, whatever features. For example, the NDU Air is an unmanned aerial vehicle, again incubated by one of our faculty members. The Off-Grid is a company that comes up with a novel way of uh, battery uh, that is mainly for uh, the taxi kind of a thing, and that, uh, you know, it has a huge investment from one of the multinationals, and we have this pool, which is uh, a company that converts the temple waste into various products. One of them is the uh, leather, which they call as Fleather. Again, these are all R&D that, that happened on this campus, and, uh, you know, that is something that, that we are very, very proud of. Uh, these are some of the highlights about the recognition that our, you know, Incubators have received. Uh, some of them have been highlighted in Forbes and, and so on. So that is just to give you an idea how even the uh, technology and products that the startups have come up with have been recognized globally. Uh, this one example I'm sure many of you know is uh, an invasive portable ventilator that was developed by a startup company with help from some of you who are here in the audience. Uh, this happened during the COVID pandemic uh, in about eight to ten months, we are able to, from uh, uh, you know the prototype to you know uh, commercializing this particular you know product has happened during the lockdown, and there is a book that has been written as to how uh, this could happen. You know, this is something that you know we have close to about 4,000 hospitals. The ventilators have already been installed. It's one of the leading companies in India now. Uh, not only they they make it but it's being exported now <clears throat> so these are some of the centers that we have one is a center for nanosciences and it has you know nanoscience as the theme area and of course this center also has some of the spin-offs that have come from that this e-spin is a company sort of came out of this particular center and they you know um, many of you know the swasa mask that has come from this company right uh, and we have a National Center for Flexible Electronics. Again, this main area is flexible electronics. Uh, even the watch that I spoke about that has come from an R&D from this particular, you know, uh, center. And they also are involved in many other uh, uh, product development. One is, of course, a wearable device for early cancer detection. Again, that is being transferred to a company for, uh, you know, uh, launch. <clears throat> We have Center for Cybersecurity. Again, that is well-known center in terms of uh, you know cybersecurity, and it's a, a national facility, and uh, you know it provides tool and you know for protection of all the critical infrastructures of the country. Uh, there, uh, I'm sure many of you are aware of it. And we have recently uh, launched this Mehta Family Center for Engineering Medicine. Uh, this is supported by a Mehta Family Center. Uh, this again looks at the engineering medicine interface to come up with uh, devices and technologies for disease uh, diagnosis and prevention. So there are three verticals that are identified. We have a new building that has been inaugurated recently. If you have time, uh, I would request that you may visit the facility that has come up quite well. Yeah. So we are also very, very happy that uh, the 5G testbed that is established at IIT Kanpur has really played a significant role in the 5G e ecosystem in the country, the indigenous you know, uh, development. 
uh, this also was mentioned by the honorable uh, prime minister in his uh, you know address to the public and uh, you know some of the technology that was developed as part of iit kanpur and iit madras <clears throat> uh, you know this this 5g consortium uh, the 5g wan technology is now uh, licensed to tejas network a tata group company uh, that would become the backbone for future telecommunication in the country uh, these are some of the highlights by the prime minister about the the, the r&d uh, outcome from the institute and we have a center center for developing intelligent system again this is mainly focuses on ai and machine learning they come up with novel tools and methods for various application uh, uh, which is doing extremely well uh, so we have also center for excellence for unmanned aerial vehicles uh, this is something that is funded by both the central government and the state government uh, we have launched a new mtech program on unmanned aerial system with support from the ministry of electronics and it uh, and of course the up government also has funded a lot in terms of uh, you know training and uh, product development and so on but this is uh, one outcome of many of such research initiative that is cp gram portal uh, i'm sure all of you are aware of it those who are in india at least this is centralized public grievance redress and monitoring system which is monitored by the prime minister of india office pmo office uh, which is a robust platform and this was created uh, developed uh, from iit kanpur and this uses the ai and uh, data science uh, machine learning algorithm wherein you know any complaint in any any of the indian languages can be uh, read and sorted to and sent to the relevant ministries and sections and follow up action automatically it happens actually this really brings down the time required for managing many of the you know public grievances and the government has really appreciated they are going into many other you know uh, defense and many other ministries they want to replicate this particular system and uh, we have been awarded the national award for e governance uh, for this particular contribution so we have set up uh, a center for uh, Uh, what do you call a DRDO Industry Academy Center for Excellence? Uh, Professor Kantesh Palani is one of the lead faculty members in this, and this is mainly to uh, look at defense applications, uh, and that is something that we have been funded. And there are a number of research projects in this area. Mostly, as you can see, that it is all in materials part, whether it's the flexible electronics, advanced nanomaterials, and so on. so that's the strength also we have a large number of faculty across the department who come together and 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 drive these projects uh this is one uh, highlight i would like to sort of touch upon for the techno park this is the you know facility where industries can come and set up uh, their r and d because of our uh, input and tech transfer and uh, know how that that you can help them this loras lab is one of the leading pharma company uh, and uh, you know one of our faculty members have developed a platform for gene uh, therapy applications and and this is very unique in india and and that brings down the cost of such application to 10% what you would otherwise you have to pay if you have to get it from the us or europe market and loras lab is setting up a huge facility here they are investing close to 100 crores for setting up their lab uh, this would be their first level of screening and and then it would go to the next level so that they are setting up in their own factory that clearly shows uh the 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 research contribution and the know how and the expertise that we have here so we have signed uh, an mou with the up government and uh, another company called carkinos healthcare private limited this is a company that is funded by both reliance and tatas and this company mainly uh, does a kind of a, a genome screen for cancer diagnosis uh, this is a kind of an initiative with the up government the idea is to screen all patients that are referred to for cancer diagnosis and use that data that we generate for uh, finding uh, drug targets novel uh, early disease uh, markers and so on so that would be the research would be done at iit kanpur this center is being established in uh, Uh, a cancer hospital in lucknow so this is the tripartite agreement that we have signed and we are looking at uh, something that we can really reach out to the entire population of the state and we are going to get a large amount of data that we are going to analyze 
to uh, identify novel markers and drug targets, and which could be even a preventive, you know, measures that we can come up with. So uh, this is another initiative recently we started. We assigned an MOU with the Indian Institute of Skills at IIT Kanpur. This is this was done in the presence of the uh, Minister for uh, uh, Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, who is also Minister of Education. So we have been given uh, the mandate to train, uh, identify faculty, and mentor the IAS. And what we have done is a very different because there are two other such institutes in the country, one in Ahmedabad, other one is Mumbai, Tata's and Ambani's, but they are looking at low uh, uh, key uh, kind of a training. But what we are looking at is a futuristic uh, area. You can see here robotic and automation, advanced manufacturing, agriculture 4.0, advanced different technology in healthcare. So in this uh, MOU, uh, there would be a facility that would come up at IIS Kanpur, which is inside the city. And there will be advanced uh, labs and facilities will be set up on the campus. So we would open up both of them for people who would come and train. And this is many of them are sponsored by the industry, including HAL and others. Uh, this is a very industry relevant. And uh, <clears throat> based on the demand, we will come up with training programs that could be for three months, six months, one year, and so on. So that's something that we would launch very soon. So we have already received funding for it. We are setting up the labs for it. <clears throat> the other major initiative that happened a couple of months back is the Kotec School of Sustainability. Uh, this is supported by the Kotec Mahindra uh, you know, group, uh, which is 120 crores they have pledged. And we are setting up a school that is launched in Nov uh, November last year. Uh, these are the areas, of course, uh, so you, you bring in science engineering, which could have an impact on the society at large. It could be society and economy, environment and ecology, and how we can really you know, bring about change. It's not only academics, but research, policy, and many other. That's why we have launched it as a school. That's something that is coming up in a big way. So we're extremely grateful to our alumni uh, for their support and vision. For example, two such centers that are shown here, both are seated by you know, our alumni, distinguished alumnus, uh, uh, Mr. Muktesh Pant and uh, Mr. Sudhakar Keshavan. For example, uh, the Kotex School, uh, I would say this is the seed that really uh, went on to become a school. It's uh, a school uh, for Sandra uh, <coughs> uh, Keshavan. Chandrakanta Keshavan Center for Energy Policy and Climatic Solution. This was sort of, you know, uh, established with support from Mr. Sudhakar Keshavan. Not only uh, he sort of, you know, helped us in setting up this center, but really he played a major role in setting up the school. So he really brought in experts, helped us connect with people, and really helped us in many, many different ways. Likewise, we have this Shivani Center for Nature and Reintegration of Hindi and other Indian languages. This is mainly for the students who come from the vernacular background. When they come in, they find it difficult for you know, understanding the, you know, our teaching in English. So it provides a soft landing. In fact, uh, you know, we have been translating many of the technical books into vernacular language that would help them. And also, it helps in many different ways. This is one such center that really would make a huge difference. I'm thankful to all the alumni support. We have this Ranjit Singh Roji Siksha Kendra. Again, this is a center which really uh, look at outreach activity in many different ways, including you know uh, training the rural uh, kids for science and STEM discipline, and also training the teachers there, and uh, empowering women in rural area and training them. Therefore, they could need not go out of their place, but they can learn from there. And we have this Jeet Pindra Unit Operation Lab uh, for the part of the chemical engineering. Uh, we have this J. Pulu Non-Invasive Brain Simulation Lab. This is set up uh, with support from uh, late uh, J. Pulu, uh, a master uh, who graduated from Computer Science Department. Uh, that uh, is in the Cognitive Science Department, and also he contributed to furnishing of the library reading rooms. Uh, if you get a chance, you could see that it looks much, much better, more convenient for the students to learn. I'll just touch upon our international collaborations. Uh, there are you know, uh, internships and other things. Anyway, it is there. But what we are going to talk about is the joint degree programs that, that we have with universities. Uh, this is the PhD uh, with uh, with, with the National Chiotang University in Taiwan. This is a fully funded program. 
Um, and then you have with New York uh, University, Latrobe University, this is one of the, these, this one and Taiwan is two leading universities. We have more than 100 students who are doing the giant degree program. We have supervisors from the fourth institute and the degree is jointly awarded. There are other uh, programs like joint supervision program. The degree is awarded by IIT Kanpur, but we have supervisor from both institutes that I can, and few other American universities we have signed up in you know, MOU for that. Um, these are some of the examples. For example, a joint PhD program with uh, the University of uh, University Tandem School of Engineering, uh, and then we have joint PhD de degree with the National Chiotang University Taiwan. We have with Rice uh, R and D collaboration, joint supervision. This is Latrobe Academy, and so on. So that's that's an example. Coming into infrastructure, you, as you may have seen, uh, the campus has grown in terms of the number of buildings, number of hostels. We have hostel 14, and we have 15 and 16 coming up. Uh, that's that's uh, you know hall 14, 15, 16. Soon you'll see. Uh, we have GH1, GH2, hall 4 has become again a girls' hostel now. Um, so we have a you know uh, uh, the built-up area that is shown here. So we are going to. Uh, there are many projects that are already completed, some about to complete. You can see that the built-up area is, is increased uh, to take care of the increase in the student strength and research lab and new departments and initiatives. So this is a huge building. This is the largest building on campus, Diamond Jubilee Academic Complex. So we have engineering science building one, two, three, and so on. Um, and and uh, you know this is a Type P apartment, 120 apartments are there. This is the Mehta Family Center for Engineering Medicine. Uh, hall 14 and research complex. This is the R&D facility for industry to come, um, come and set up their labs. This is the techno park. And this is the uh, faculty building annexe that is coming up. Maybe in two months, it will be ready for occupation. Uh, these are some other <coughs> um, infrastructure that is put in place. So we are, uh, you know, uh, we are very, very happy again for the contributions from our alumni. Uh, this is one of such such initiative, IIT Kanpur Development Foundation. It is a Section 8 company that is mainly created to connect with the, you know, the alumni and in and inform as to what happens in the institute in a more professional way. So we have an independent board. Uh, we are very, very fortunate to have. Some of us, our uh, distinguished alumni, as board members and contributing. Kapil is the CEO, and Rajiv is here. So we are very, very happy uh, that he could spend time with us in in making this possible. He has been, he has been, you know, is the brain behind the whole initiative, and he has been advising us in many, many different ways. Thank you very much. Uh, this has really made a huge difference in terms of you know outreach activities and so on and fundraising in in a more professional way and I'm very very happy uh, that some of you have really contributed uh, and this is just to give an idea as to how our uh, endowment has increased this is in the last five years you can see that amount received in the past five years and these are amount uh, realized uh, you can the commitment and, and realization that has gone up and thanks to many of you who have contributed many different way in fundraising. Uh, these are some of the major donors. Uh, extremely uh, grateful to all of them for the support, not just in extending the financial uh, help, but also in advising in all the different ways as to how we can really make a difference in terms of the center, the departments, the novel initiatives. We are very, very, very grateful, grateful to them. <clears throat> These are the alumni engagement. Uh, even when you go abroad, uh, we do conduct alumni reunions, not reunions, alumni meetings in different cities. Some of them are shown here, for example, in Sydney, in New York, and so on. Uh, again, to sort of update the alumni community on the developments at IIT Kanpur and how they could really contribute. Uh, that's something that we value. And this is the alumni reunions in the financial year 22-23. You can see that a large number of reunions happen now because of the you know pandemic has really you know, sort of uh, prevented us from hosting. And actually, we initiated all these things from 
class of 2020, uh, you know, uh, to class of 1991. Yeah. So some of these that are shown here, even we have started this 10th reunion as well. So that is something that uh, we have began very recently, so you can see. It's a you know, fantastic response from the alumni community. They're able to get uh, spend time here. I will just you know, sort of end my <clears throat> presentation with a brief about a major initiative that is Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology. Uh, this particular school uh, is the first school to be set up in the institute. The second one is Quatech School of Sustainability, but Gangwal School of Medical Science and Technology, this was uh, established about two years back. Uh, the idea is that the school would have a hospital and it would have a large number of research centers. And uh, you know, this school's mandate is to bring in science engineering to address some of the unmet medical needs. Uh, which could be unique to India or it could be global, but you know, use this you know, multidisciplinary approach to bring in some solutions and products that could be of great benefit to the community. So that's that's the mandate, and we already have uh, the building coming up. Uh, you know, we have this this whatever you see here is the architectural rendering of this uh, hospital and the medical school. The hospital will have. 500 beds, these are the clinical disciplines that are shown here, this is the phase one. So we already established these centers of R&D centers of uh, excellence, each one has got a flagship project, I'll talk about one of them. And, and, and uh, the idea is to each of the centers should really look at some um, pressing need and come up with a solution or devices that could be of great benefit to the society. Uh, you know, close to about 70 faculty members from different departments are associated with this school. That includes all the science, engineering, and humanities department. That's something that we are extremely happy about because it's not just driven by a few set of you know faculty members. It's a completely community-driven initiative, and such a large initiative can happen only when a large number of faculty members come together. This hospital is coming in this place. This is the site which is close to the Shivli Gate. Uh, you have the entrance this side on the back side of the campus. Uh, it's about 30 acre plot, which is a green plot. What you see here is the school that is coming up. Um, so we are extremely uh, grateful to all of our alumni who are founders of this uh, med school, Mr. Rakesh uh, uh, Gangwal and our founders, Muktesh Pant, Dev Juneja, Amin Jalan, Anil Bansal, and Deepak Narula, the you know, league co-founders, and also the JK Cement Group for the hospital, because the hospital is named after our another alum, um, Edupati Singhania. So that's a super speciality hospital is coming. Uh, this is just, I'll talk about one such flagship project that is coming out of one of the centers of excellence, that is cardiovascular diseases. This is to develop what you call as a Hridayantra. This is a artificial heart or LVAD, left ventricular assist device. Our chief mentor for this project is Dr. Devi Shetty of Narayana Hridalia. In fact, he is one of the advisors uh, for the entire project. And he has really written about how this particular project is going to really make a huge difference. Because uh, if you really look at the complete heart failure, uh, this is something that thousands of people die, especially when it affects the young ones, you know, when they're teenage, there's nothing you could do much except that going for the device that you want, what you call as LVAD, but it's extremely expensive. It's about one and a half crores, including your cost of hospitalization, surgery, and so on. The idea is to bring down the cost of this device by, you know, uh, to less than 30 lakhs. Therefore, it is more affordable, and at the same time, this is as effective as the one that is currently available. So we have put together a team of faculty members and fellows and students who work on this problem. Uh, we started it uh, sometime in Feb 2023. What I can tell you is that we already have a prototype. We are going to, soon we'll be going for the animal trials. So it'll be either done in the buffalo and pig. These are the two animal models. People use it for it. It has cleared all other trials. We have a fantastic uh, device, which we are very, very hopeful that it would it would work, and if it works, it's going to be a game changer. 
really thank you. So there are multiple opportunities, uh, you know, that are available how you could contribute to this School of Medical Sciences and many of the flagship projects. We'll be very, very happy to uh, give details about it. Not only this, but in other school departments, centers, whichever you feel uh, you would be interested in. So we are already building uh, a studio apartment. This is 90 uh, studio apartments coming up. This is funded by REC uh, Corporation. Uh, and this is for the resident doctors because we'll be having close to 100 resident doctors in this hospital. So that is for them to stay. So we uh, did this Bhumi Poojan and these are some of the, you know, progress. You can see that we have awarded this to LNT and uh, TCE is, uh, is helping us. And uh, this is coming up and we should have this school and hospital complex commissioned by November, December 2025. That's our target. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of academics, we are looking at this med school as a different one. So, you know, our, our, our vision is that you should have a BTEC, anybody who enters here for four year undergraduate, you should be able to spend another three years or so, get an MD. You know, you're going to create a different breed of clinicians who understand science, engineering, and medicine. That's the motive. And that's what we are working with the University of Melbourne. So they have this pathway program in Australia that is something that they have started. You need not enter after your, you know, plus two to, to the medicine program. So that's something that we are working with them. So they are helping us in coming up with the curriculum of other than the uh, MBBS MD program. We are also looking at clinical research. We are looking at sports medicine. We are looking at hospital management. We are looking at public health. So these are some of the academic programs we would start maybe in one or two years. Uh, so, and of course, we have uh, tie-up with some other hospitals and uh, medical uh, universities abroad. So goals, um, 2025 is not far away, the next year. So to increase the faculty strength, 600 plus students, 10,000 plus, because you know, there are new departments, new programs. Uh, of course, this school would be completely functional with the hospital and complete the expansion of the academic infrastructure, some of them still ongoing. So building residential um, accommodation for you know, students' capacity. As I said, two more hostels or halls are coming up. That's each one is about 1,000 seater, 2,000 students' uh, accommodation. School of Sustainability, we have launched. We have to really you know, make it uh, what it should be, what has been planned. That is what the launch is. And of course, horizontal growth, you, know, you have School of Entrepreneurship, School of Data Science, and even there is a School of Skill Development for most of the outreach programs. These are some of the ideas that, that we have, maybe in one or two years that should take off, right? There are many challenges, of course. Uh, one is, of course, uh, the government no longer give granting aid for any of the construction activity. In fact, the capital grant they give is about 40 crores a year. Uh, that is mainly for maintenance it takes off. So what they give is the loan, um, which is uh, what they call the interest-free loan. The ministry pays the loan, but we are expected to repay the loan that we take for any infrastructure projects in a, about 10 years. Uh, therefore, that whatever revenue that we generate, that also goes back in repaying the loan. So we have substantially increased our revenues. We uh, probably about 100, 150, 160, 170 crores we generate uh, out of our IPRs, our um, research projects that has overhead, interest, and so on. So that's what you know helps us to repay as well as take up new projects. But that is a limitation if you really want to uh, launch large programs and infrastructure and so on. And that's where we are looking at multiple avenues, how uh, uh, many of you and uh, corporate in terms of CSR could contribute. You know, that's something that we would be very, very happy to discuss. Of course, the resource generation is not only for infrastructure, but it could be for the students in terms of scholarships, awards, travel grants, faculty for higher seed grants, awards, or chair professors, so on, to so attract the best talent. And of course, you know, beyond uh, contributing, you could also engage with us in many different ways, help us as a visiting faculty, adjunct faculty, professor of practice, and, and also, uh, 
you know, really ranking the institute, you know, in terms of participating in some of the rankings, uh, which, which certainly, you know, could be of great help. Uh, that's a sort of brief about the institute and what we are planning to do. Uh, thank you very much. I would really appreciate uh, your feedback, comments. Thank you. Thanks a lot, yeah. Uh, if there are no comments and queries here. Sorry, can you? Well, we do still have land. There is a land outside our the Shivli Road. There's about 40, 50 acres land still there. That is with us still. So some of the future developments would happen there. You know. Still, we have land, enough land. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. To propose something. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, Dora is the main contact person, or Kapil, one of us, and uh, you would connect with the relevant department for that. Yeah, that's okay. Right. Thank you very much. Really one, just one second, Dr. Yeah, sure, Dr. Dr. Ganesh. Yes, sorry. Sir. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I will say the quality of stay also needs to be improved. I, I know there are resource uh, constraints, but is there a long-term plan, or not really long-term plan, a plan in a next couple of years that in no room there will be more than two persons, and in, like in hall one, basically the rooms are meant only for one person. Yeah. So what was the designed capacity, it should not be used more than that. And if there is a... Uh, and uh, need more hostels should be made. The quality of stay also needs to be improved. That's I, what I fully agree with you. But you know, there are certain things that are not in your hand. When the government announces there will be twenty percent increase in the intake, there will be supernumerary seats. It comes like that, right? So they will say we'll give you a fund, we'll give you a loan. But that takes two years, three years for you to build, right? And and this but that the, the increase in the number kicks in immediately. As I said, we are adding four, you know, uh, two thousand more, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, two hostels each having thousand rooms, right? But that will take, you know, at least one one year or two to come. But then it all comes in, then you can have it. One, Dr. Ganesh. Yes, please. No, yesterday when we were talking, you mentioned that only one percent of people of the students are now going outside. That's right. So I'd love to hear because that. Should be a, it was a revelation to me. Yeah, yeah right. That just so, 1% uh, of our students go outside of India now. Right. So if you look at the undergraduate program, like what is the Indeed. scenario? Uh, we probably graduate more than uh, 1,000 students, like 1,100 or so. Uh, currently, we have about 1,300 per batch number. So the number of students who go abroad, as he said, is 1 or 2%. Right. 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 And there is a substantial number, about 300 plus students, who do master's here. Stay one more year, do a master's here. So that's the difference here. Uh, Dr. Ganesh, yeah, that's great. So, uh, Dr. Ganesh, thank you for, your, for a fantastic uh, presentation. I think it gives a great overview of where we are and where we are headed. I have two unrelated questions, perhaps not touched by you, but uh, maybe of relevance. One is, how easy is it to attract fam uh, faculty to a place like Kanpur? I mean, I, I understand that it's much easier for Delhi and Chennai and Bombay to attract fa uh, faculty. How easy is it to uh, get good faculty for, for Kanpur? And the other question is around another topic which perhaps uh, you didn't cover in, in detail, but I thought it's important. Uh, you know, when we were undergrads here, we, we, we had this humanities program, yeah. which at that time, I don't think we even understood the relevance or importance of it. But I think it helped us to develop, right. uh, you know, well-rounded personalities. Now, in between, you know, when we, when we were here 10 years ago, 15 years ago, my understanding was that the humanities program uh, was really not even being 
uh, you know, gone through for undergraduate students. And that was what was making the, uh, you know, the undergraduates maybe very good in their uh, area of expertise, but not really as individuals going out to face the world. So what is the situation with that okay. now? First, let me address the faculty issue. Uh, the, you know, if you really look at our success rate, uh, success rate tells um, what percent of the faculty join here, right? So uh, anyone, anyone who applies, they would apply for multiple places. They would apply to either Delhi, Bombay, or Kanpur. So our success rate is about 67%, which is no different than any other IIT. So we are as bad or as good as any other IIT, okay? What it offers, uh, people come for different IITs for different reasons. One, of course, the brand it offers, and there are some departments people know that it's the best, or for a particular domain. You have colleagues who work in that area, or you have a, uh, facilities because research is important because nowadays a lot of new pressure for the faculty to perform, right? So you have to have facilities. So we have, you know, therefore, you know, you, you can already see that they know which place is doing well, what facility they have, where you should go. And what this campus offers is a fantastic living condition, right? You know, we have a beautiful campus, the houses are very good. But this is what we serve as a positive point, right? So obviously that is something that uh, Bombay, Delhi cannot really be proud of because, you know, their, their campus is smaller, they are living in a city, it doesn't give this care. Therefore, it's, it's a, you know, it's a give and take. So I really, I can say, tell you that uh, the faculty that we attract are as good as or better than any other IIT, and majority of them could walk into any of the leading universities in the world, we as good as that. That's something that first point. Second, with regard to the humanities, I think this popularity of the humanities course remain as it is, as it was when you studied. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, we have expanded, as you said, like, you know, we have fine arts, we have sociology, we have psychology, we have, you know, literature, linguistics, everything has come, and there is a proposal to start a school of liberal arts, which will come up, right? So they're going to start a master's program as well. These are all in pipeline. So that's, it's, it's, it's as important as it was before. And the courses are as popular as it used to be. So that there's no, and even if you look at uh, the number of electives that are from HSL, even the number of courses that are, the students take in the open elective, it remains the same. That's something that, that has uh, kept as it was. And, and I, I really do not see much, you know, uh, uh, that, that interest gone away or anything like that. Uh, I have a, a request and a question, Dr. Yeah. Ganesh. Yeah. Uh, the request is that not all of our batch is over here today, so can I request you please share this very, very informative presentation. We could uh, love to share it with those who are not present here. And then I could use it also for fundraising for Gangabal School. Sure. Yeah. So that would be perfect. Yeah. And uh, the question is that you gave the percentage of uh, students going abroad. But uh, a couple of years ago, I had an interaction with students over here, and a large percentage wanted to become entrepreneurs. So do you track that percentage? Yes. How, what percentage become entrepreneurs? Well, My special interest is mentoring startups, yeah. so that's, that's the question. Absolutely. So uh, uh, before directly coming to that part, I can also tell you that in our undergraduate program, we already introduced, for example, somebody want to take a semester break and try out some, you know, be, be part of a startup to understand. We convert that into credit as well, so they can even turn credit towards their undergraduate program if they are associated with any startup, you know. And if if someone completed the DTEC and they want to go and start something, so we also have what is called as a delayed placement. So you try for one year, one and a half years. If you're not successful, you want to come and sit for placement you can come and sit for the placement again. So these are the things that we have done. And probably about 20 to 30 percent of our students get into even the startups, you know. There are a large number of startups that are there, but many of them don't come immediately, but they join some of the startups as well, see, in terms of placements and so on. So that's pretty active. Uh, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a very uh, welcome trend. Uh, people take risk now. Uh, it's not something that they only look for 
high paying multinational you know kind of a job they even take this kind of risk so that is that that's something that has come up yeah. okay. students actually on this aspect of and promoting entrepreneurship at the school level yeah. and i feel strongly that project based education should be brought to classrooms and i promote live projects should be live projects to be conceptualized developed and executed by students yeah. because this is the stage yeah. when they have a large number of students together and that force actually can explode into very creative activity if they work as a team and i am i strongly uh, feel no, no. i am actually started a campaign for bringing live projects to classrooms Absolutely. in schools we'll, we'll reach out to you for that but just to add on to that uh, if someone we have what is called as we have into this what is called as a immersion program for example you want to Uh, go to the hospital, understand what challenges they face. You can bring up some solution using your domain expertise. We provide them with, you know, fellowship for them during that part, whether it's the summer or they want to take a break or after that and come back and translate that into the idea into a startup. Even that is promoted here. You know, so we do encourage. We'll be very happy to discuss with you. Right. So. Thank you. I'd like to give my inputs. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Uh, is there any uh, program to digitize the library and you know and make it open to the alumni who may be in any part of the world mm -hmm. like uh, you know i was very impressed uh, berkeley does that right. stanford does it yeah. and as an i have one of the few who stuck to hardcore engineering in mm -hmm. my life and the biggest problems that i have faced is in data mm -hmm. and the accessibility of data right. and if i want to have data some astm standard for example 60 dollars and that even if i pay those 60 dollars and get that standard that standard may refer to some other standard also which i need to really understand the whole thing mm -hmm. and other 60 dollars so it becomes very difficult for people like us in india especially to go on paying those dollars okay or to refer to old journals like when i was doing my project here in iit all those relevant articles from the uh, journal of institute of chemistry and all that were available readily right. but now i have to work in a blank yeah so is can is there any solution to this right. i mean thank you see whatever uh, which were for example thesis is another thing that 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 is owned by IIT Kanpur is available, right? In digital form, you can access. But if you are referring to books and journals, it depends on what license we take. So we can only take a campus license. If you try to access from outside, that is not allowed. I mean, if, if there are multiple logins from outside, if they do, it will be stopped, right? You know, that be, it depends on what is the license that we have with the provider. So they don't allow it. They are commercial people, right? Now how do Berkeley and Stanford? Do? for journals and so on you know, i mean it is they have a like for example we can we have a license right so how much we can pay for it so our limitation is that so it is right now it is several crores what we pay for the journals here for the access and books right so that we have to restrict to the like even if you download then it becomes a problem so there are so many conditions if i have to allow like that you know multi users from anywhere and then you have to pay more so that's the limitation right? hello uh, one area that we felt we lacked while studying here was the legal aspect of industries that is the factory acts industrial laws when we went into industry direct we felt at least i felt we were void right. and many things which we faced were quite difficult because how to handle labors what are the legal implications so with so many humanities course is it relevant to add something regarding law also something law related to engineering i uh, in fact uh, 
one, uh, the IPR law is something that we have already sort of introducing in some of the programs, but the industrial law, another thing that we haven't thought about yet, but certainly is something that we can consider as, at least as an elective course for students who are interested in industrial jobs. See, for example, we read about boilers, mm. but there is somebody called a boiler inspector or a industrial boiler regulation. We never studied right. about right. it. Right. And we went into industry, we found so many bureaucratic laws, yeah. almost in every field, whether it's electricity, boilers, or civil engineering, which we were never exposed to in IIT. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, certainly, yeah. We'll, we'll consider that, yeah. Yeah, please, yeah. Uh, leadership skills, which we were not directly exposed to, but indirectly we developed them on our own sets. Right. So it's something along those lines can be added as a part of the humanities curriculum or something to. Yeah. So to we, uh, well, I mean, uh, every department now has a communication course, right? That is there. But what you are referring to is something that. Uh, uh, we do offer as a non-formal education. There are student bodies which conducts that kind of a session during summer or during you know the semester period. But for those students who are interested in, it's not something like compulsory, but certainly there are there. Many of the alumni have been invited to give the pep talk and you know explain to them what is the importance of networking, communication, and so on. So that's that's happening. It's a really well student-driven activity, yeah, at undergraduate level, yes, yeah, very much. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I think we are getting late now. One more question will, yes. can be only taken. Okay, Bupender, you can ask the question. Providing a mix of boys and girls in our undergraduate and graduate schools. It's about uh, <laughs> 30%, 30%, 27%. Uh, it has come a long way from where we used to be, 1%. <laughs> so it, it, it varies from the department. If you come to our department, you have more girls than boys. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rekha. Thank you, sir.